Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. This is part two continuation of the video on determining the convergence or divergence of infinite sequences. So next example I wanted to work through is the following sequence. A n is equal to n times sine of one over n. And we're just determining whether or not this infinite sequence is convergent or divergent. So we always start off by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of a n, and we have here n times sine of one over n. And maybe you can already notice, so n is going to approach infinity. One over n is going to approach zero because n is getting arbitrarily large, and sine of zero is zero. And this is problem right here. Infinity times zero is an indeterminate form. It's an indeterminate product. So what to do? Well, let's see if we can rewrite this expression so we can evaluate the limit. And hopefully you're good at remembering this limit from calc one, the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta is equal to one. Yes, this one needs to be burned in the brain, ever so useful. So what I'm gonna do is rewrite my sequence, the terms of the sequence. I have the limit as n approaches infinity of sine of one over n. And then instead of writing times n, I'm gonna write divided by one over n. Same thing, right? Dividing by one over n is the same as multiplying by n. Now, notice here we have a limit where n is approaching infinity, but this limit that you learned back in Calc 1 has the argument approaching zero. No problem for us because notice as n approaches infinity, one over n is approaching zero. So to make things just really precise and lovely, I'm going to say let's let t equal 1 over n. And we can see clearly as n approaches infinity, this would mean that t is approaching 0. So now I can rewrite this limit in terms of t, and it's equivalent to the limit as t approaches 0 of sine of t instead of 1 over n over t. And we know that this is equal to 1. Therefore, the sequence an converges. It converges because the limit exists as a finite number. That's all we care about when we're looking to determine the convergence or divergence of a sequence, different than a series, okay? Good, so in this case, it worked out that we had um, the capability to rewrite our sequence so that we could evaluate the limit using this known limit. But what if that's not the case? What if you have something a little bit more spicy? Oh, okay. Well, let's see what to do. So here we've got a n equals 1 plus 2 over n raised to the n. And again, notice if you just try to take the limit as is, the limit as n approaches infinity, we have 1 plus 2 over n raised to the n. Well, my problems arise. So as n approaches infinity, 2 over n is approaching zero. So the base here is approaching one. And then remember, n is going to infinity. So you basically have one to the infinity. And that's another indeterminate form. If you need a refresher on your indeterminate forms, I'll link it, a video lecture I have right here in the top right. There are seven of them. I just think like the seven deadly sins, there's seven indeterminate forms. Okay. So what to do, this is an indeterminate power when you have the base is approaching one, exponents approaching infinity. And if you'll remember, the way we evaluate these is we take the natural log of this expression, move the exponent, and then we're gonna apply L'Hopital's rule. But since I know I'm gonna apply L'Hopital's rule, then I can't use this sequence as is because it's not differentiable. So I'm gonna say, all right, let's consider a function f of x, which is defined to be 1 plus 2 over x raised to the x. 
And then I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides. So this is basically y, right, equals one plus two over x to the x. And now let's take ln of both sides. Why in the world would I do that? Because I wanna move this pesky little exponent to the front here, okay? And things are gonna start working out for me, slowly, slowly. So we have natural log of y equals x times natural log of one plus two over x. Remember, you can only apply L'Hopital's rule to indeterminate forms of the type zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So what I'm looking to do is make a quotient out of this side here, right? I want a rational expression. So let's see, let's keep rewriting. We've got ln of y equals, I'm gonna leave this ln one plus two over x here in the numerator and then rewrite the rest as divided by one over x. That's the same as multiplying by x. And then now let's see here, this tells me the limit as x approaches infinity of natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity. We have natural log one plus two over x over one over x. Now let's see, as x approaches infinity, one over x, yep, that's going to zero. Two over x is going to zero. So all we're left with here in the numerator is natural log of one. Yep, that's going to zero. So we have indeterminate form of the type zero over zero, which is what we wanted, because now we're allowed to apply L'Hopital's rule. You gotta tell everybody what you're doing. So you go equals, watch me use L'Hopital's rule. Give him his credit, give him his credit, guys. And then we've got the limit as x approaches infinity. Okay, you take the derivative of the numerator and denominator separately, all right? When you do L'Hopital's rule, you're not doing quotient rule. You're doing derivative of the numerator over derivative of the denominator. So let's go. Derivative of natural log of something, mm -hmm, I'm saying it like that on purpose, is one over the something. So one over one plus two over x times the derivative of the something, the derivative of what's inside. Well, what's inside is one plus two x to the negative first. So if I take the derivative, derivative of one is zero, derivative of two x to the negative first is gonna be negative two x to the negative second. And then downstairs in the denominator, I just have derivative of one over x, which is x to the negative first. So the derivative of the denominator would be negative x to the negative second. Okay, notice this is gonna be pretty easy breezy to clean up because I can cancel out x to the negative second in the top and bottom. These negatives also cancel out. So now all I have left is limit x approaches infinity. You do still have this too. Oh, how cute and harmless, it's okay two over one plus two over x. All right, can we take the limit here? Let's see, x is going to infinity, so two over x will approach zero. All I'm left with is two over one, so this limit is two. Okay, now be careful. The limit as x approaches infinity of the original function, which was just one plus two over x to the x, that's not equal to two. Remember, we took the natural log of that expression and then we got that the limit was two. So how do we undo a natural log? What is the inverse function for natural log of x? It's taking e and raising it to that. So you would have e raised to the ln of one plus two over x to the x. And then you can pass that limit through. You don't always have to write it, but I'll be super precise. You have e raised to the limit as x approaches infinity, natural log, one plus two over x to the x. And what did we just show? That this limit here was equal to two. So as a result, our final answer for the limit 
is e raised to the second. Okay. If your teacher is cool with it, I mean, you can kind of just bypass this little part here. Once you get the limit after taking the natural log of your expression, then just know for your final answer, it's always e raised to whatever you got there, you know, to undo basically the natural log. Um, let's summarize though. So let me add a little page because we just wrote down what the limit of that function was. And we're such thorough little mathematicians, we're always gonna summarize our findings appropriately. So this implies that the limit as n approaches infinity of one plus two over n to the n is equal to e squared. That's a finite number, therefore it converges. How fabulous. So I would say the biggest takeaway um, is that anytime you use L'Hopital's rule, you need to redefine a function. Remember, you can only use L'Hopital's rule for indeterminate forms of the type zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So you have to rewrite your expression so that it matches that form before you can bust out L'Hopital's rule. Okay, lovely. I've got, I think, just one more, and it's actually not as tricky as the last one. So we'll all leave feeling fabulous about ourselves. The sequence here is natural log of 2n squared plus 1 minus natural log of n squared plus 1. So again, you just start off taking the limit as n approaches infinity. And we have natural log 2n squared plus 1 minus natural log n squared plus 1. As n approaches infinity, 2n squared plus 1 is going to infinity. Natural log, you remember graph of natural log? You should, you should, should, should. If not, relearn it right now. Goes through 1, 0, vertical asymptote right here. Do, 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 x axis. And it looks something like this, okay? So as long as the argument is approaching infinity, natural log of x also will approach infinity. So this first term is going to infinity. And then we have minus. Again, that's going to infinity. So all of this second term, natural log of n squared plus 1, is approaching infinity. Oh, infinity minus infinity is another indeterminate form. No, it's not 0. Okay. <laughs> so what to do? Well, I can actually rewrite these as a single logarithm pretty easily, and that will solve all my problems. I don't even need to bust out L'Hopital's rule. So let's give that a go. Let's consider the limit as n approaches infinity of a n. And remember, our log properties, we can rewrite a difference of logarithms as the quotient of a single logarithm. So we would have 2n squared plus 1 in the numerator over... I don't want to type, not right now, over n squared plus 1 in the denominator. And then at this point, what you're allowed to do is you can pass the limit inside to the argument, inside the natural log, so we can evaluate it further. So now we have natural log like this of the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n squared plus 1 over n squared plus 1. Now, yes, the numerator is approaching infinity, denominators approaching infinity, but we don't need L'Hopital's rule. Then we're going to have to redefine a function. No, it's just a cute little rational expression, polynomial in the top, polynomial in the bottom. We're going to divide by the highest power of the variable in the denominator and be on our merry little way. So I'm going to divide top and bottom by n squared. You should remember doing this back when you first learned your infinite limits and you didn't even know L'Hopital's rule existed, okay? So we've got limit and approaches infinity. In the numerator, I'm going to have 2 plus 1 over n squared. And then in the denominator, 1 plus 1 over n squared. Lovely. All right, and then now you can take this limit, no big deal. 1 over n squared goes to 0. And then you're just left with 2 over 1. Mm -hmm. So we've got natural log of 2 over 1, which is natural log of 2. Okay, 
that's a finite number. The limit exists. So therefore, an is convergent. And that concludes the video. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you get a better grasp of determining the convergence or divergence of sequences. Remember, testing for convergence or divergence of an infinite series is a whole different beast. I have a whole playlist here dedicated to calculus to all of the different tests for convergence or divergence of infinite series. So check it out if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Please subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And you can catch me on Instagram and TikTok at Math TV with Professor V. I'm a little more relaxed there. You can see what I look like, what my life is like a little bit, just a wee bit. And I have a good time there. You can catch my integral of the day a lot of the time too. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.